Hello, and welcome to STAT 2050 at the University of Wyoming. Online, having a great time, I'll tell you what. Um, okay, so it's a new week, and we're going to be doing uh, some new stuff. We're going to be doing a little bit of math, a little bit of drawing. Uh, you don't have to be an artist, I promise. I definitely am not. Um, but we're going to be using uh, some types of drawings to represent data, some measurement data. Pretty cool. Um, but before we get into it, let's talk about Let's just talk about the, the album of the week here. Um, Wolfpack is my, I think they're my favorite band, maybe of all time. Um, I certainly listen to them the most, uh, but they're great. Uh, they're like a funk band uh, out of like, I think at one point they were from California uh, in LA, but I think they all met at uh, Ann Arbor, interestingly enough. Uh, but they're like, they're just so good. My favorite song I think on here is Funky Duck. It's just so funky. Um, <laughs> I you should check them out, especially if you're looking for uh, some some new music. I think. All right. Anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> let's talk about math. Um, all right. So today we're going to be doing some summary, summarizing uh, and displaying data. But let's think about something first. Um, so here's the question: A real estate website in Greenville, South Carolina, beautiful place. Um, highly recommend that you visit after you visit Charleston, of course. Um, but a real, a real estate website reported that the median price of homes sold in the past nine months uh, was $136,000 and the mean price was $161,000. How do you think these values were computed? Which do you think is more useful for someone considering who, who is considering buying a home? Uh, the median or the mean, small typo here, average is, should be mean instead. Um, pause the video and think about it for a second. Maybe go talk to your neighbor. Maybe if you own your own house um, and, and you were looking at all of these kind of statistics, maybe think about what was going through your mind um, and then we will come back and discuss it briefly. All right, I imagine you pause the video, talk to your neighbor, talk to yourself or whoever. Um, this brings up a really interesting idea and sort of the fundamental idea of statistics. We use these um, summarizing statistics, the mean and the median, so we don't have to look through every single data point uh, to make a conclusion about something or to make a decision about something. We use the mean and we use the median to summarize that whole picture uh, and make it a little bit more digestible and a little bit more understandable so we don't get lost uh, as, as easily. Okay, so both of these values are summarizing the same thing, houses in Greenville. But they both have different values. Which one do we trust? What do they tell us? How are they computed? So many questions, but they will be answered here in just a little bit. So. Uh, keep this in the back of your mind, and uh, we'll move on here to another question. Students in a statistics class at the university uh, were given a survey and asked for their age. One student was retired, uh, and her age was considered an outlier, quote-unquote outlier. What do you think that means? Okay, I will let you pause the video again. And just think about it for a second. All right, welcome back. Uh, I hope you pause the video, even just for a brief moment. Um, but in statistics, we have this idea of outliers. And in English, we have this idea of outliers. And unfortunately, they don't really mean the same thing. Most of the time, they do kind of represent uh, the same idea. But in our heads, everyone has a slightly different idea of what an outlier means. In English, oftentimes, we mean that an outlier is something that is uh, different than the norm, or way different than the norm, okay? Uh, but something that is outside of the norm, in my mind, might be within the norm in yours. But in math, in statistics, we have ways of quantifying outliers, okay? Sometimes the outliers in math and stat matches our description of an outlier uh, in English, in real life. But sometimes, sometimes, they don't match. Something might be reasonably uh, within the data that might still be mathematically considered an outlier. 
Okay, keep that concept in the back of your mind too. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But uh, let's kind of go back to this question uh, regarding the uh, median and the mean here. And let's talk about uh, what they actually mean. All right. So in statistics, we have this idea of measures of center. That's just a fancy word for things that summarize data for us. And we have the three uh, usual suspects here, the three main ways of representing a big group of data. The first measure of center is known as the, <laughs> the mean, the mean, M-E-A-N, okay? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. The second measure of center is the median, is the median, and the last measure of center is the mode, okay? And so we use, we use all of these values to represent, to summarize a population or a sample or something, right? Because ideally, <laughs> I don't want to have to go through the whole sample, especially if it, if it looks like this, right? Where each color represents something different, right? Uh, maybe a different height uh, or different age or something. I don't want to have to go in there and just look at it and make my own decisions. That is just too much information, right? Too much information. So we use these tools here to summarize what we see here, okay? And each one of these is calculated in a different way and each thing tells you something slightly different as far as information goes, um, but they are all extremely useful, okay? And oftentimes, just something to keep in mind here, oftentimes these are all put into the umbrella term average, okay? Average. So when you are reading through the news uh, or reading um, something on the internet or whatever, or somebody tells you something and they say, well, the average blah, blah, blah is blah, 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 whatever. Um, they better tell you how they calculated that average and what that average represents because that can mean three different things the mean the median and the mode we'll come back to this in a second but just keep that uh, in the back of your mind pretty much all the time <laughs> in this class and uh, outside of this class it's very important uh, that you remember this all right so let's talk about each one let's start with the mean and i've got a little note in here a little extra this is also known as the expected value, okay? Uh, and the formula for calculating the mean uh, looks gross, but it's really not that bad, okay? Uh, the short of it is all you wanna do is take all of your data and sum it up. Sum up all of your data uh, and then divide it by the number of data points that you have. And that's the mean, that's the expected value. And this is used in a way that sort of is, uh, it's like a representative number for your whole sample. So for example, <laughs> um, if you were to take the mean height of everyone, I, I use this example a lot. I think I used it last week too. But if you were to take the mean height of everyone in this class or everyone at the University of Wyoming, um, we'll just split it up. Uh, we'll just focus on males for now. Um, you get a value, you, you sum up all of their heights and divide it by how many people you surveyed, and you get something like 510, for instance, I'm just making that number up. What that means is that if you were to take all these people and put them in front of you and point at some random person and say, I expect you to be 510, you probably would not be too far off. There is still a chance, you know, that you're gonna be way wrong but you'll still most likely be pretty close in, in being right, plus or minus some, some little bit. And that's what we kind of use the mean for. In fact, the mean is um, pretty much the most commonly used statistic uh, in, <laughs> in statistics as far as like formulas and processes go. Everything is more or less based around the mean. Okay. Um, so let's let's break apart this gross-looking um, equation so we can understand it a little bit better. So I've got a blank page here. 
Uh, and I recommend that you do this too. Hopefully you're taking notes uh, along with me. So I'm gonna write it out again. We have this x bar, x bar is what that means. Uh, and then we've got this gross looking thing. And then this weird looking symbol. <laughs> uh, and then that. All right, so that's that. Uh, let's let's break it apart. Let's actually start. Let's start down here in the denominator. It's the most simple, uh, I think, out of this whole thing. But uh, n. What does n represent? Well, n just represents the number, the number of things. <laughs> I'm not going to put things. Uh, but it is the number of things that you have. Uh, I'll say the number of data points. Number of data points. Okay, or, the, or simply just the number of things that you have uh, in your data set. Okay, so that's all fine. That's all good. Let's look at the next thing. Um, we'll do it in this. So we have this xi. What does that represent? Well, xi is just the individual. Actually, let me do this. Let me describe it this way. It's all of the individual data points. All of the individual data points. Okay, that's a simple explanation, but it still doesn't really tell us a lot. Like, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck do I do with this I here? Okay, well, let's say that if you were to plug in, um, well, I just represents a number. Uh, it just represents the location where the data point is. Okay, so if I were to put in, let's say, x1, x1 is just the first data point. The first data point. x5 is the fifth data point, right? The first, uh, sorry, the fifth data point. Okay, x1000 is just the 1000th data point, so on and so forth, right? It's as simple as that, okay? So the i just represents the location where the data point lies, okay? So that's all fine. Uh, let me, I'll get rid of this last one here just so I have some room. Okay, and then this weird thing, this weird thing, let me use a different color. Okay, we have this. What in the world? does this represent? Well, this is the Greek letter, capital sigma, okay? Um, not important that you know the um, the history of it or whatever. If you speak Greek or write in Greek, cool. <laughs> Ancient Greek. Um, but we're not going to worry uh, about that, okay, at all, actually. Um, and all this is telling you to do, all this is telling you to do is to take the sum of whatever is to the right of it. Okay, Okay. so in this case, we're taking the sum of the xi's. But where do we start and where do we end? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Great question. Um, so we have this down here. We have this i equals 1. And then up here, we've got n. And all this is saying, all this is saying is where to start, where to start, and where to end. And that's it, right? So when we have something like this, let's say that we have uh, 10 data points. Let's say that we have 10 data points. And I'm keeping things in general terms. So n equals 10. Let me write this in a different color too. Cool. n equals 10. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to take the sum of the data points we have. So this would look something like this. You start at the first data point and you end, in this case, at the 10th data point. Okay, and that would be the sum of the xi's. So that would look something like this. x1 plus x2, so the second data point, plus the third data point, and then so on and so forth, down to the 10th data point. And that's that. Well, that's all that's telling you to do is add up all of the data points that you have. And it's always gonna be adding up all of the data points. You're not gonna be 
um, only adding up <laughs> like the middle half or whatever. Um, that doesn't never, never, ever, ever will you do that. You're always going to be adding up all of the data points. Okay, and that's that. So let me write this out in some English, right? Uh, because this is gross. <laughs> I don't like this. So how to find mean? How to find the mean? Okay, first step, first step is add up all data points. Okay, and so that's this part. That's the sigma from i equals one to n of the xi's. That's that point, that's the numerator, okay? And then the second step, second step is divide the value from step one that you get from step one by um, the number, so the hashtag, the pound sign, um, that's represents number, uh, divide step one by the number of data points. So divide by n, right? And then that's that. And then after that, you've got, oops, you've got x bar. And x bar just represents the sample mean. And that's that. Finding the mean, the uh, equation itself, a little gross, right? Not super cool. Let me zoom that out too. Not super cool, right? But the process itself is fairly easy, right? Uh, fairly easy. You take all the data points you have, add up all of the values, and then divide it by how many values you have. Okay, and that's that. There we go. That's the, that's the expected value. Very cool, very cool. Now, on to the median. So the process for the median is much simpler uh, than the, the process for the mean, right? Um, the median requires no math. All it does, all you need to do for it, is to order all the values from the smallest to the largest in order, right? So in uh, increasing order. And then you just find the middle value. You find the middle value. If there isn't a middle value um, where you, you have two values, if you have an even number of data points, um, then when you whittle away the ends, you'll get to two uh, data points. You just take the mean of those two data points, and then that's, that's your median, okay? And what the median represents is where, so it's some value where all, uh, all the values below that value, but below the median, represents 50% of the data. And then the other half of the data is above that median value, okay? So what the median tells you is just the exact middle point. Okay, that's fine, that's good. So everything below that is 50% of the data, or 50% of the data is below the median, and 50% of the data is above the median. Okay, that's fine, that's cool. And then the mode, the simplest, um, and I think it's pretty useful, you know, sometimes in some situations, but it's the simplest. Uh, it's just finding the most frequent, just finding the most frequent value, the most frequent, the most commonly occurring. Um, so that's when we have discrete data. When we have data that is rounded, right, into whole numbers, um, you probably will have a mode if your data set is decently large, um, but sometimes you won't have a mode and that's okay. Um, and if you have continuous data, so data that is more precise, data that has that is represented by decimals or, or fractions, uh, there will most likely never be a mode, um, most likely. So that's that. This is, I think, the most commonly used, or sorry, the most uncommonly used, um, but when people say average, this is kind of what they mean. Um, so like, instead of saying like, oh, <laughs> like uh, the median American or whatever. What does that even mean, right? I don't really know. Uh, what they mean, I think, I think, is they mean the most frequent American, the person you are most likely to kind of bump into a bunch of times, right? Um, rather than like the expected value, the mean or whatever. 
Um, but oftentimes the mode is is not totally applicable. Um, it's also a little weak too uh, because the median represents you know where half of the data lie uh, above and below it. The mean is the expected value, but the mode is something that you either are or are not, and that's that's just kind of that. So again, that's more of an aside than anything, but um, just you know an important kind of fact there. So. We've got all that. I'm going to stop this video and start a new video, but let's do some, let's do an example um, in, in just a second. So go take a break, go, go make some coffee or some tea or drink some water, stay hydrated, wash your hands, uh, and I'll see you here in just a little bit.